smoked meatloaf in the Ninja Wood Fire. Let's do it. Welcome to the Salted Pepper, where we cook for real life using real food and we keep it real simple. Today we're gonna make a really simple barbecue meatloaf that we're then gonna smoke on the wood fire. So I'm super excited. You don't have to follow this recipe to smoke a meatloaf. You can follow your own recipe for meatloaf. You want about one pound of ground beef for the timing that I'm gonna show you on the wood fire. If you wanted to double that, then you would have to increase your timing because it's gonna take longer for your meatloaf to get done, but no problems. You can make as much or as little of a meatloaf as you want. I'm using one pound of 80-20. I do recommend using 80-20 when you're going to smoke a meatloaf because the smoking process is longer and it's at a low heat, but it can tend to dry out the meat. So you wanna have that fat in there. In fact, I actually add more in the form of smoked bacon. So this is really finely diced bacon, okay? And I used thin cut bacon for this. I tried it with thick cut and it didn't render as much inside the meatloaf as I wanted. So I recommend using thin cut. You want about four ounces, which you know, round about four slices and dice it super, super small. So that's gonna add some flavor. It's gonna add a little smokiness to the inside. It's going to add um, the, the fat that we need to keep everything really juicy. Then we wanna start building our flavors. This is a half of a sweet onion. Doesn't matter, you can use yellow onion, whatever onion you want. Diced very finely. Again, probably about an eighth of an inch dice. You want one whole large egg. Now for the binder, I'm using oatmeal, okay? My mom always used oatmeal in her uh, meatloaf. I use oatmeal a lot in my meatloaf. You could use breadcrumbs, you could use uh, crackers, whatever you want. A third of a cup though. That's gonna help hold everything together, but not dry it out too much. Okay, now let's talk about the seasonings. I'm making a barbecue smoked meatloaf, okay? With a barbecue glaze on top. That's what I wanna do. So I'm gonna use my barbecue rub, which this is my beginner's luck barbecue rub. You can find the recipe um, on a rib recipe on my website and it's super easy. But before you decide how much barbecue rub you're gonna put in, make sure you taste it. You get an understanding of how salty it is or how sweet it is and then make your uh, judgments on how much to put in. And I'm gonna share with you a little trick so that you have delicious, perfectly seasoned meatloaf every single time. I'm gonna share that in just a minute. I know for this rub, the beginner's luck, two tablespoons is a nice start to season. Notice I said start, because we don't have to be finished. We can taste this, right? And I'm gonna show you exactly how I do that. Okay, barbecue sauce. This is my 10 minute barbecue sauce. It is a red, sweet, with a little heat, barbecue sauce, very basic. You could use whatever barbecue sauce you love. Keep it on the red side though. I don't think I'd put a fruit-based barbecue sauce. Although, I don't know, apple butter bourbon barbecue. That would be good too in this. All right, I have four tablespoons. I'm gonna put two in right now. And maybe I put a little bit more, two and a half. That's fine. The rest will be for the glaze on top. And I might need to add a little bit more because I think I put too much in here. Oh, no worries, no worries. All right, now we get to mixing. I don't know how to tell you to do this. Roll up your sleeves, clean your hands, and dig in. That's the easiest way. And mix it all together. Now you will notice that this meatloaf feels a little wetter than maybe a meatloaf that you would make to bake in the oven. That is on purpose, okay? That's because of that longer smoking time. We wanna have a wetter meatloaf. More moist. That's why we added that bacon too. All right, once you're mixed up really well, now we're gonna taste for seasonings. And don't, don't freak out, I'm gonna cook it. This is the little secret. Take off just a little bit, like a quarter size. Have a frying pan warmed up, so I have mine heated on medium heat. Form a little flat patty, because that's going to cook really quick. Throw it in and cook it off. Then we can taste it for seasonings and adjust as needed. I do this each and every time I make meatloaf, even if it's been a recipe that I've been using for years because I always feel like something could be off. And once you are done baking your meatloaf, it's really hard to season it after the fact. 
So get it right before you get it on the smoker or in the oven. All right, so now we taste. Mmm. It's perfect. Let's get the Ninja Wood Fire Outdoor Grill all set up for smoking. So I'm gonna use applewood pellets. We're gonna fill the hopper uh, full with one half of a cup of the pellets. And then we will select the smoker setting. We will set the temperature to 225 degrees for 90 minutes and then hit the start button. When you're setting it up for smoking, you don't have to hit the ignition button for the pellets. They will automatically ignite and start the smoke rolling. All right, time to form the meatloaf. Now, what I like to do for forming meatloaf is the exact opposite of what I do when I make burgers, and that is you do want to compress the meat a little bit, and that's so it doesn't fall apart when you go to slice it. So what I do is I put it on my cutting board, and I just start hitting it. I'm just sort of moving it into a shape, but really what I'm doing is compacting all the ingredients together, and then I'll flip it over, do the same thing. And it's worth spending this little extra time. See, there's that a crack right there. If I put that together, that would be where you sliced your meatloaf and it starts to fall apart. So take the time, compress the meat a little bit. All right, there we go. We're all shaped up and we're ready to get it on our preheated smoker. So what I like to do for this 90 minute smoke is about 30 to 45 minutes into the smoke time, check the hopper when it has reduced down to 50% pellets, put in another quarter cup of pellets and let them ignite with the heat that's already inside of the pellet box from the burning pellets. If they don't ignite, you can always hit the ignition button, hold it down for three seconds and it will start the ignition process. About an hour and 10 minutes into the smoking time, I like to take a temperature of the meatloaf to see where we are. I like to see the temperature somewhere between 155 and 160, and then I also baste at this time. So we have between 15 and 20 minutes left of the total smoke time. Put on some barbecue sauce to baste it. I use about three tablespoons, but you can use as much or as little as you want. When the 90 minutes of smoke time is done, you want to make sure that the internal temp has reached at least 165 degrees Fahrenheit before pulling it off the smoker. If for some reason it has not reached that high of a heat, you can just go on to bake for about 10 minutes on 350 degrees just to finish it up. But in my experience, it's gonna be 165 or above. I've had it all the way up to 180 and it's still super moist and delicious. All right, the last final little touch before I slice into this delicious smoked meatloaf is to add just a little bit of rub on the top. So I just sprinkle it right over top. It sticks to the glaze. It adds a little more sweet heat and it looks really pretty. All right, there we go. Our smoked meatloaf is all done. Let's slice it. All right. Oh my goodness, it looks so good. All right, let's give it a taste. Oh my gosh, I love meatloaf. I love all kinds of meatloaf, but when I tried smoked meatloaf for the first time, I was like, wow, this is really good and different. And I love making meatloaf sandwiches with the leftovers. Oh my goodness. All right, here we go. Mmm. This is absolutely delicious. It has the perfect amount of smoke. It's not heavy. The apple wood really complements the meatloaf so, so well. I am such a fan. I really hope that you give smoked meatloaf a try. <laughs>